What's up, you guys? So I had a question from a uh, one of you guys that left a comment about the three daily trainers, the Nike React Milers, the Pegasus 37s, and the Winflow 7s, and what are my opinions, and which one do I think is the best Nike daily trainer out of those three, especially since they're all kind of right in the same price bracket with each other. Um, so I'm going to speak to you about those those particular shoes. And before I get into that, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button below, uh, that really helps me out and helps me do more content uh, out, you know, to get more reviews and whatnot out there for you guys. Uh, so you guys can really uh, get an idea of what is a really good training shoe, especially if you're an average person, not a uh, professional runner like myself. You're just an average person just wanting to enjoy running. Anyways, uh, all of these shoes, by the way, purchased with my own money. Uh, nobody had sent them to me. Uh, nobody had sent me them to review. These are just my own opinions and so on and so forth. Um, so you guys are the first to see it and let's get into it. Uh, so we're going to start with the React Miler. Okay, I've already done a review on this. Uh, if you want, I will put a link in the description below. Uh, that way you can kind of see uh, the review video of this particular shoe. Uh, that getting said, this is a $130 pair of shoes. It's more based as a long distance runner. I'll just quickly get into some specs for you. It's a 21 uh, millimeter stack height in the front, 31 in the rear for a 10 millimeter drop. It's using full Nike React foam uh, front to back and it's got a lot of stability type of uh, features in it and incredibly durable materials that are on this particular shoe to make sure that it lasts for mile after mile after mile. So this is particularly, in my opinion, it's more of a long distance runner because it is kind of heavy, but it's also very plush. It's got plushness around the heel collar, even inside the shoe is rather plush and comfortable. Uh, it's got a gusseted tongue in there, a semi-gusseted tongue in there. Um, it's just overall, it's got a nice heel clip here to help with the stability as far as landing in your heel area is concerned. It's also got this nice little rubber patch right here on the inside of the shoe, and that just kind of helps uh, with your arch support, and it also helps with pronation as well. So if you start uh, over pronating, uh, where you're kind of landing more inside your foot. Uh, it helps kind of straighten up your, your foot so it keeps in the pronation kind of landing area. Uh, it also has a rocker type of design to it that you feel when you're running and that's supposed to help transition from heel to toe off and it's supposed to help expend a little bit less energy uh, and I can attest to that because this is kind of like my go-to shoe for long distance running. Uh, it helps me kind of stay in a rhythm uh, it really helps me stay comfortable on those long distance runs and it's just a really comfortable shoe. It's relatively breathable, but I'm not going to lie. I don't know what it is about React Foam, but after so many miles, the underfoot bedding does get pretty hot in this shoe. Even on today when it was a relatively cool day, it still got pretty hot. Uh, you know, inside the shoe, but it does breathe relatively well, but all the materials on here are built to be like incredibly durable. Uh, so that's kind of where the React Miler sits. In my opinion, it's more of a long distance runner shoe, even though it's a daily trainer, it's not really a shoe that you're gonna be able to really pick up the pace. You can pick up the pace a little bit, but it does lack a little bit of responsiveness because this is a softer React material that's underneath here. Uh, so it's built to just kind of absorb a lot more impact than it is to exert you know, more energy or more bounce to it. It does have some features that do help with energy returns, such as this decoupled groove right here that actually does run all the way up to the toe area, all the way back, and this is where it really gets into it. So it kind of gives you a little bit of bounce if you are landing in that heel area. Otherwise, it's still just a very like plush landing whenever you, uh, whenever you land in this shoe. But that being said, if you're looking for a shoe that's gonna last you, a very long time and also get you miles into a run kind of help you train for a long distance run this is the shoe i would go with it's not really a tempo day shoe it's not really a like a track day shoe 
this is a like you're going out for a road run and you're just looking to put in some miles at a nice easy steady pace without doing too much exertion uh, as you go out there for a run that's kind of where this shoe fits in uh, is more of a long distance runner than i would say a daily trainer so that's where the react miler sits in uh, next up is the tried and true Nike Pegasus 37. So getting into a little bit of specs on this particular shoe, it is a 17 millimeter uh, front, 27 rear, so 10 millimeter drop, full Nike React foam midsole with an air zoom uh, unit in the front that's 20 PSI for the men's, 15 PSI for the women's. Uh, it's got a nice lockdown unit here. That's something that the, the Pegasus has really gotten to be known for. They've moved away from the flywire and gone to these kind of tabs here, uh, which I think work really well, but it took me a while to get used to them because I might be the only person in the world that actually liked the old flywire system. Um, but this shoe also has, because of it having a lot more stack height compared to the previous versions of the, um, of the, Pegasus line. Uh, this particular shoe, in my opinion, kind of because of how narrow that heel area is and it doesn't have a heel clip on it, um, you kind of, when you land, you become unstable with this particular shoe. That's something I noticed with it is it's almost like you're kind of unstable with the landing, higher stack height, narrow landing pad. You, you kind of get that instability when you, when you start landing. Uh, but that being said, it's this is a more responsive React foam than what is used in the React Miler. Okay, so let me clear that up. The React foam in this is more responsive. It gives you a little bit more bounce. It's got a really nice decoupled groove down here to give you a little extra bounce, a trampoline kind of effect if you land in your heel uh, or a little bit more on your heel in the mid strike area. Um, but that that air zoom unit in the front really provides a, a nice pop when you're coming off of that, that, that toe off, really gives you a nice pop. And especially if you are a little bit heavier of a runner like myself, you really are able to compress that airbag and then it kind of pops when you come off. So with that being said, where can this shoe be used? Well, this can be used for long run days. It can be used for easy days and recovery days. It can also be used for tempo days and I wouldn't say threshold days, but you could push it. It's just, it has a little bit too much squishiness to it to really do threshold runs. You really want something that's a little bit firmer and a little bit lower stack height than this to do those threshold type of days. So like the previous version of the Pegasus, the 36 or the 35 would probably be a better bet if you wanted to kind of run at like as fast as you possibly could. Uh, this just really, especially when you start getting into that heel strike zone, it really absorbs the impacts a little bit too much for it to respond and give you that push forward like you would get on previous models or even on other uh, shoes that are out there on the market. So, but it is super breathable, nice, uh, nice upper uh, dual machine knit upper. Um, it does have a nice, you know, nice heel collar area. The only thing, my only gripe with the Pegasus 37, really, other than the lockdown, for whatever reason, it took me a while to figure out a way for the lockdown to work for me. Um, but the the other thing is, the you, you almost just have to get used to it. Your foot almost constantly feels like it wants to come out of the heel cup. It just, it, it constantly does. And it's, it's almost annoying because you wanna feel more secure. You're not gonna come out of the shoe but it just feels like it just comes out just a little bit from that heel cup. And it's just annoying is what it is. Uh, but otherwise, it's a fantastic shoe. This is a shoe that you can do just about everything with. And that's why the Pegasus has always been Nike's workhorse running shoe. Um, so that's kind of where this sits. It's just a really good shoe that you can use every single day. Uh, and it's durable. It'll last a long time. It'll get you mile after mile. Um, my opinion... If you're looking to use it as a long distance runner, yes, you'll probably be able to run at faster speeds in this versus the React Miler, but the React Miler is gonna be more comfortable 
mile after mile after mile. So like with this, usually once I get past like five or six miles is where my feet just don't want to be in these anymore. But if I'm in the React milers, my feet feel like they can just keep going. They just, I don't know, I think it has to do a little bit with the rocker. I think it has a little bit to do with a little bit softer, more plush React foam than this particular one does. So just keep that in mind if you're looking at the Pegasus. This is kind of a good shoe if you're looking for a good all-around shoe. You just have to get used to it. That's really what it comes down to, I think. Um, but this is kind of where I'm at with that particular shoe. Uh, is just a, a good overall daily trainer that you can use for just about every it's almost that one shoe that you can use to run in every day okay and i'm going to explain why you shouldn't but it's it's almost that shoe that you could run in every single day uh so finally we're going to get into the last shoe which is the nike winflow 7 which is honestly one of my favorite shoes. And I think it's because like closest to my heart, I had the Winflow 5 and it was probably by far the best shoe that I've ever owned. Uh, so that being said, I'm gonna get into this and it's drastically changed from the Winflow 5, let me tell you that. Um, but it's also a very budget friendly shoe, in my opinion, for a runner. Um, so let me go and say that Nike has this listed as a long distance runner, a long distance daily trainer shoe. So very much like what you'd get out of the React Miler, but I'm going to kind of knock Nike back a little bit because I don't feel that this is the long distance runner that maybe I'm thinking of or that most everybody else would be thinking of. Because even though it's got a really good stack height, 19 mil in the front, 29 in the back, 10 millimeter drop. Go figure, it's Nike, 10 millimeter drops all over the place. Um, even though it's got a really nice stack height to this particular shoe, that foam that's underneath, which is the older Cushlon foam, it's been updated, but it's the older Cushlon foam uh, that Nike used in the old Pegasus 35 and 36. They also used it in the Winflow 5 and also in the Winflow 6, but this one's been updated. It is a little bit softer which I like. Um, it's almost, almost on par with, with React, which is kind of nice, but I don't think, and granted, I've only got about 27 miles on this shoe. Uh, this shoe got stored away because I tried to shorten my rotation down uh, to work on these other shoes first before getting some newer shoes into the rotation. At one point, I just had too many shoes, I think, in my rotation. So I wanted to shorten it out or shorten it down just a little bit and focus on just a small group of shoes first. So these got stored away. So these will eventually get back into the rotation. Uh, but I just wanted to save them back. But this particular shoe, uh, it's got a little bit more stability in it, which is nice. And I think that's where it helps with the long run because it's got a really wide four foot landing pad right here. It's, I mean, it's wide. Uh, even the decoupled groove here, not as deep as what you get on the PEG 37, but it's also a, a little bit wider of a landing pad, even in that heel area. So if you are a heel striker, it's even got a nice little wider uh, landing pad in the heel area. But in the toe area, it's just incredibly wide and you can even see where it flares out on both sides. So it's got that little added stability. So when you land, you're not moving as much side to side. Um, this does have in the midsole, by the way, it's got, uh, air zoom unit in the front and in the rear, it's got a nice wide air zoom unit in the front. So if you are a little bit wider footed or you like your feet to kind of splay out a little bit, this is a shoe for you. Um, it does have a lot of responsiveness to it. So if you're looking for a shoe with some really good pop to it, this is an awesome shoe for that reason. The Cushlon foam is plenty, plenty of, of cushiony uh, plushness underfoot that you can get some pretty good mileage out of this particular shoe. I haven't taken it on anything beyond about four and a half miles, but I have a feeling that I could probably take this on very similar runs to the React Miler because of that air zoom unit in the heel and the forefoot, kind of helping with that, cushion, that updated Cushlon foam to give it more of that React foam feel. 
uh, where it's, you know, nice and supple and so on and so forth, but it's super responsive. So you can pick up the tempo where you can't do that in the React Miler, in my opinion, anyways. Um, it just doesn't have the responsiveness in that React phone. This does have the responsiveness. The weight is also lighter than the React Miler, uh, which is nice. It's also, in my opinion, it's a little bit more breathable. The upper is also feels a little bit lighter. The lockdown in the heel cup area also feels uh, better than the Pegasus 37, that's for sure. Uh, the you know it locks you down a little bit better than what you get in the peg 37 so it's almost like a nice mix of what you get in the peg 37 and the react miler but in one shoe that's just happens to be cheaper if that makes sense uh, you get some stability because of the wide landing area you've got the nice breathable upper uh, with some flexibility in it that you get out of the peg 37 you get the air zoom units in the front and the rear uh, which you only get an air zoom unit in the front on the peg 37 um, but that Kushlan foam is super responsive but it's also very plush when you go out for a run so it's kind of like the best of both worlds between the two shoes in my opinion and it's cheaper it's $90 $120 for the PEG 37, $130 for the React Miler, $90 for the Windflow 7s. I mean, it's awesome shoe. Um, so with that being said, React Miler, again, long distance runner, not really a trainer that you do tempo days or track days or whatever in. That's more of like easy day, long run, recovery run type of shoe. This is tempo day, long run, uh, easy day, recovery run. I mean, you name it, it this is going to do just about do it all, except for, in my opinion, threshold runs or intervals. That's the only way that I don't see that shoe fitting uh, is in those really super fast runs. This is the same as this. It's a long run. It's an easy day. It's a tempo day it's recovery day it's just everything that you could do so in my opinion between the shoes i'm putting the the react miler even though it's a daily trainer i'm putting it in a different category that's a long distance runner it comes down to these shoes which one is the better daily trainer and if i had to pick between the two of these this i finally figured out and it's actually pretty comfortable and i do really like it uh but if I had to pick between these particular shoes, I've also got to take into consideration the cost of the shoe. And because both of these shoes weigh about the same, they, they have very similar materials that are being used, except this one's Kushlan, this one's React. Uh, if I had to pick between the two of these as a daily trainer, every single day type of shoe, I'm actually going to go with the Windflow 7. I'm sorry. I got to do it because it is $30 cheaper than the Pegasus 37 and offers almost the same capabilities and performance as the Pegasus 37. And in my opinion, I think it looks better than the Pegasus 37 too. I, I just, I really do. It's, it's more comfortable. I think it's more stable. I think it's just, it's everything that I would want in a daily trainer type of running shoe is just in this shoe. I'm really happy with this particular shoe and I'm excited to when I actually get to run in this like full time. So I hope that answers some of those questions for you. If you do have any more questions uh, about these shoes, uh, by all means, leave your questions in the comment section below. I'll post a link to the review videos of each one of these shoes in the, in the description of this video. And, and again, if you have any questions, comments, I'd like to hear from you. What, what's your opinion? I know a lot of you have the PEG 37s. Some of you may have the React Milers. Some of you may just be interested in the Windflow 7. Which one's the better one? Uh, if, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any, like, what is your opinion on these particular shoes? If you've used them, what would you consider? Which one would be the better one? Um, so again, leave your comments, questions in the, in, the, in the section below. I'll try to respond to them as quickly as I can. Uh, and 
Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, and again, as always, please be safe and enjoy the run.